alternative modalities can you use to help you with your shadow work? Hi, I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com and if you want to learn how to become a witch or a Wiccan, hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss anything and hit the bell if you want to be notified of when I have new videos. This video is about shadow work. I haven't done a shadow work video for a little while now, so I thought it's about time I did some more shadow work videos because half of what I do with people is actually shadow work one-to-one -one with people. So shadow work is about coming to know ourselves or know thyself more. It's really not about us trying to become better people or trying to, to change ourselves in, in the way that I'm bad, I've got to get better. It's more understanding ourselves and ways that we can make ourselves happier because when we're happier and we're more connected to ourselves, we're actually better we are better we do become better in, res in respect to our relationship with other people so the whole idea of shadow work in wicca is so that we can become more conscious of ourselves and so that we can become more more spiritually realized people and looking at those parts of ourselves that we don't like that are socially uh, unacceptable and also that we may even deny that we have within ourselves so these are qualities like narcissism, selfishness, greed, uh, prejudice, discrimination. Uh, every human being on this planet struggles with the dark and the light of the polarity. And when we get away from judging ourselves for these qualities and start looking at them and working with them in a way of healing the self, we can start to see the we can start to balance our energy so that we turn selfishness for example into self-care we can turn narcissism into self-acceptance and self-love in a healthy way we can become more discerning so when we're looking at discrimination we can turn that more into discernment we turning things into a way into something that when we're not conscious of them when we're not understanding of them, we lash out and be really harmful to ourselves and other people. But when we understand these things within ourselves and understand that everybody has them, no matter how good we think we are, uh, then we can actually utilize them in a way that is positive and much more spiritually, a more spiritually enlightened way. So when we're doing shadow work, all of these things will come up like, Oh, I'm selfish. Oh gosh, I'm really arrogant when it comes to those things. There's, there's all these parts of yourself that you'll list depending on what type of shadow work you're doing. So whether it's the, the black mirror, so to speak, where you list all your negative qualities and you, you can usually find it really easy to list your negative qualities. But then when you're asked to list your positive ones, you struggle with that because a lot of us tend to be more, we beat ourselves up more than we actually build ourselves up. And then looking at all those negative qualities and going, oh, crap or being in denial about negative quality so for example I was talking to a psychologist one day and we were talking about narcissism because I was talking to her about marketing and I was sort of saying well if you want to market yourself you need to tap into your inner narcissist because you need to have that self-acceptance and self-love and self-appreciation in order to be able to put yourself out there in front of people to let them know that you're there so that they can come to you for your counseling services and she said to me i don't have enough I'm, i don't have an, any narcissism narcissism in me and i thought as a psychologist you should realize you have narcissism in you and that you're as much as of a narcissist in in the shadow as anyone else is in the shadow uh, so it really threw me to hear somebody um, say that who was actually in that industry so there are parts of ourselves we deny. I don't want people to think I'm a narcissist. I don't want people to think I'm arrogant. I don't want people you know, to think I'm selfish. And what these, these qualities do, or this, this, this fear of the shadow does, is it stops us from actually expressing ourselves in the world, creating things in the world that we want to create, and doing the things in the world that you want to do. So a lot of you, I know a lot of you, are into creative uh, activities so many artists in the pagan community, healers in the pagan community, people who want to make a profession out of reading, say tarot cards and divination, having healing, doing Reiki, 
teaching, all of these sorts of things actually require a certain element of narcissism for you to actually love yourself in a positive way, accept yourself and appreciate yourself in a positive way so that you can put yourself out there so that people know you're there to come to you and so that you can benefit other people. So this is where shadow work is really important to enhance your life, not to beat yourself up around. So what modality can you use to help you not judge yourself and beat yourself up about being selfish? So for example, you've done your shadow work and it's come up that, gee, I'm selfish in so many ways. I feel, or I feel selfish when I'm doing something. So you, maybe you feel selfish when you say no to somebody uh, because it's something somebody wants you to do. Maybe you, you don't have time to do it or you want to do something else that's really important to you and you say no and then you feel selfish. Or someone may even make you want to make you feel selfish because you're not doing what they want you to do, which is kind of could be selfish on their behalf as well. Uh, so you beat yourself up about being selfish or you may feel selfish because you've got a belief that if you do anything for yourself, even if you do magic for yourself, for gain for yourself, that you're being selfish because you're thinking of yourself and not doing it for someone else. So all of these things can come up, particularly for spiritually oriented people, because we're told in the greater spiritual community out there that as a spiritual person, you're supposed to be selfless and you're not supposed to want anything for yourself. You're supposed to give, 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 keep giving, keep giving, keep giving, keep giving, 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 and giving, and giving more, giving, 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 and not receiving anything in return. So many spiritual people burn out because they're not getting anything back. And you can't keep giving and giving and giving and not receiving. You will burn out. It's, nature is about giving, receiving, giving, receiving. It's a dance between giving and receiving. So selfishness is the one I'm going to give you an example of today and a modality that I use primarily with people that I work with one-to-one -one through my coaching. And also I do group uh, tapping circles as well. And that's emotional freedom technique or tapping or EFT. You may have heard of it. Some of you may have heard of it. Some of you probably even do it. Um, others of you may not have heard of it. And I'm not going to go into the history of EFT because you can Google it and you can put it into the search in YouTube and you'll find heaps of tapping videos on EFT. I even have another YouTube channel which I'll put in the, uh, in the description field below that is actually my tapping channel. It's a channel I probably started about, I don't know, two or three years ago, I can't remember now, that was aimed particularly at people who are in the health, alternative health, and they are wanting to put themselves out there, but they've got lots of issues in regards to money and invisibility putting themselves out there. So there's a lot of tapping videos. I have heaps on that channel. But today I want to share tapping as a modality for you to help you with your shadow work so that when you get all your shadow qualities there and you're going, well, okay, I've got these qualities out now. What the F do I do with them? Then you can use uh, EFT to help you with that. So... With emotional freedom technique, we tap on acupressure points and it's the tapping on the acupressure points, calming the amygdala down in the brain, which is the fight or flight uh, in the brain, or fight or flight system in the brain. It calms the nervous system down. And when you're calming your nervous system down around something that would normally upset you, you actually change the way the brain wires itself and you stop actually feeling that negativity in relation to what it is that you're tapping on. So we have particular points that we use. I'm going to show you a quick tap method. So this is, you'll see there's different methods of EFT out there. There's faster EFT. There's um, the basic recipe that was the original EFT with uh, Gary Craig. Uh, there are other forms of EFT. This is a quick tap method. And we start with the karate chop point here, which is at the side of the palm of the hand. And we just tap it as we speak, and I'll tell you about that later. The next point is on the eyebrow point, at the beginning of the eyebrows. And usually we'll use three fingers to tap on that point. Next point's the side of the eye on the bone, not in the eye. Under the eye on the bone, under the eye, right on the bone. Under the nose, cleft of the chin, 
And there's the collarbone point, which is where you've got your you've got your clavicle, you've got your sternum. Okay, so collarbone, you've got your sternum. If you go in on a 45 degree angle, come up closer to the camera, there's an indentation, that's your collarbone point. And one other point is under the arm, which is about four inches under the armpit. We tap on these points as we're talking about whatever it is that we're feeling or what it is that we're believing. Now, the method I'm gonna show you in this video is the self-talk method. So this is where you're just talking about what you're thinking, what you're feeling. It's like a bit of a self rant. So you're just ranting with yourself. Now there's different ways that you can use tapping. There's many different ways that tapping can be used to be able to help you change your beliefs and change the way that you feel and work with shadow work. This is just one of them and it's a really good one to do on your, on your own. And the outcome that you're wanting with this is to give you more clarity about your beliefs and to give you more compassion for yourself about feeling these uncomfortable feelings that you may have as you unravel your shadow qualities. So for example, with selfishness, it may be a case where selfishness has come up in my shadow work because maybe I'm doing the mirror shadowing work where I've encountered somebody in my life who's very selfish and I've been judging them. Because when we judge another person for a, a shadow quality or a negative quality, it's generally, generally because that person's reflecting that quality that's within us that we're denying or that we don't want within us. So this is how I would use uh, tapping to help me understand and change the selfishness just to start. So I start on the karate chop point here on the side of the palm of the hand here. And I would say, even though I hate to admit it, I'm selfish. So you can try this and repeat after me as I'm saying it and tap along with me. Even though I've found out that I'm selfish and I don't like it, it feels awful. I'm okay. Even though I've just found out through my shadow work that I'm selfish and it feels really wrong. It feels bad to be selfish and I don't want to be selfish. I'm just going to try to love and accept myself anyway. Even though it's really hard for me to love and accept myself when I know how selfish I can be, I'm okay. Okay, now then we start on the points. Now when you're tapping on the points, you can actually just use, you can use one hand, you can use two hands, and you can alternate between hands. It doesn't matter what side you tap on, as long as you tap on the points. It's the tapping on the points, it doesn't even matter what order you tap on, it's the tapping of the points that actually helps calm the nervous system down. So when you get to the points of the eyebrow point, you would say, this feeling of selfishness, this feeling of selfishness, this guilt and shame around being selfish. How dare I do things for myself? How dare I say no to people? It just feels wrong. I've been brought up to believe that I shouldn't be selfish at all. I've been brought up to believe that I shouldn't put myself first ever. <laughs> I may have even been brought up to believe that taking care of myself and knowing when to say no is wrong. And when I see other people who are selfish, I get really judgmental of them. And I say, oh, she's so selfish. Or He's so selfish. When I know that I can be selfish, there are things I want. There are things I want to do for myself. There's magic I want to do for myself. And yet something about it feels wrong because I'm doing it for me. 
And I've been told it's wrong to do things for me. Spiritual people don't do things for themselves. And it feels wrong. It feels wrong to be selfish. It feels wrong. But somehow, I don't think I'm that bad. I'm not a bad person. Just because I want to do something for myself, like some magic, it's because I want to say no when I need time to myself or I need to be doing something else. It's making me think about selfishness in general. When can selfishness be self-care? When can selfishness be compassion for myself and other people? Taking a deep breath and letting it out. So that is an example of how you can use EFT to help you with your shadow work. Now, it's not going to make your issues go away in one tapping session, uh, but the idea of doing a tapping like that and just continuing talking to yourself about the ideas that are coming into your head, the feelings you might be having, you start to get what's called a cognitive shift where you start to realize, because the emotion is starting to be taken out, the negative emotion, your nervous system is not reacting to the negativity anymore, you start to become more rational about the situation. That's really what happens. When you take the fear away, when you take the anger away, when you take the frustration away, when you take those unpleasant feelings away, you start to become more rational about the situation and you start to see things more clearly. And you'll start to realize that where you, you think selfishness is always wrong, it's, it's not always about being selfish in the negative sense, that sometimes it's actually about just valuing yourself and knowing when it's okay to say no and knowing that it's okay to do magic for yourself just the same as it's okay for everybody to do magic for themselves you realize it's okay for you it's also okay for everyone else and when you give yourself permission to be able to do things for yourself you give other people permission to be able to do things for themselves as well and you find you will become less selfish. You really will. It's, it sounds counterproductive or counterintuitive, actually, to accept your selfishness to actually become less selfish, but it actually works. So yes, so that is EFT. If you're wanting to work more on shadow work or if you're finding that there are places in your life that you're feeling stuck, frustrated, there's a lot of self-doubt, you're not able to move forward, it feels really strong. Things that are in your subconscious mind feel real. Beliefs feel real, but that doesn't mean that they are. So if you're struggling to try and move forward in your life and you are struggling with your self-esteem, anxiety, social anxiety, performance anxiety, wanting to be able to put yourself out there and do the things that you're wanting to do, but you've just got this block that's stopping you, then you can book a free 30 minute consultation with me over Zoom where we get to talk one to one with each other about your situation and to help give you some clarity about what's going on with you and then see how you are able to then move forward to be able to move forward in your life. So book a clarity session with me. It's 30 minute, it's free clarity session over Zoom. My booking form, the calendar, is in the description field below. If you want to know uh, more about the tapping uh, that I've been doing, I still have that YouTube channel up and running. I'll put the link to that in the description field below this video as well. Enjoy the tapping. Enjoy your shadow work. If you like the video, hit the like button. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, share it with your friends, and uh, comment below. I will see you next week on the next video. Blessed be.